American Crime Season 2 kicks off the anthological nature of this series. It follows the story of a boy who alleges that he was raped by someone in his private school's basketball team, which is a very serious accusation, very serious. And of course, because it's a private school and a lot of rich kids go there, there is a lot of tension built around that. There's a lot of people that want to hush this boy up, They're, uh, hush his family up, especially his mother, who really takes this case head on, who really wants to vouch for her son, even though her son is very hesitant to speak up about what really happened. This season goes more into sort of class politics, school politics, uh, sexual sexuality, and what that means, and, you know, how people deal with that sort of the struggle of rape victims and what they go through and many different types of rape victims. The interesting thing about this season is that the rape victim in question is a boy. A lot of times the rape victim in a TV show would stereotypically be a girl. That's just how we usually think a rape victim is. It's always a woman that gets raped by a man. And it's actually, in this case, a man who gets raped by a man or boy who gets raped by another boy. And I think it's because they did something different with that. They depicted a different kind of person that you wouldn't think. You are allowed, when you watch this series, to look at this case, this issue, in a very different, more pure perspective. I really enjoyed this season of American Crime. I actually enjoyed it better than the first season, mainly due to pacing. The first season, the pacing is kind of slow. You're merely looking at characters' reactions to a case. This season, there's that, but characters are also doing things to keep the plot going to progress the story. The actors did a very fine job on this show, especially the actors that played the teenagers. The actors that played the teenagers on this show were very, very good. They were so good that while technically we were watching a teen drama for this season, like this could be classified along with other shows, more stereotypically teen drama, like Degrassi or whatever's on ABC Family, that kind of thing, uh, this show did not feel like that. This show did not feel like a normal high school drama. It felt way more serious. It took things way more serious about things. Now, there were two things I didn't like about this show. One of them was Richard Cabral's character. I didn't think he was developed enough on this show. I felt that he came too late in this show for me to care, to feel like he just kind of got shoehorned in there. I felt if he got introduced earlier... I would know more about him, but his presence seemed a little out of place by the time he showed up and started making an impact with the plot. Another thing I didn't like was the story arc that went on in the neighboring public high school, Thurgood Marshall, which is mainly centered around Elvis Nolasco's character, who this time plays the principal of the school, Chris Dixon. Now, Principal Dixon gets himself into a bit of a mess when he suspends a student that was beaten up on another kid, but because that student was Hispanic and he's African-American and it was kind of a race issue altogether that he stumbled into, he gets accused for racial profiling, for racial bias. And while that story arc is interesting, I felt like it could have been used in a different season of the series. Like, that was in there, but it distracted from the main storyline going on with Taylor Blaine, the main character, the one, the boy who got raped, it distracted from his story. But other than that, it was interesting to see this series deviate from its first season, which focused more on race, which I thought that's what this series was going to focus solely on with its different stories, was just going to be racial problems. But apparently, it's going to focus on different types of crimes that go on. And this season's crime was rape. Mostly, that was the big issue, as well as sort of classism. A couple things about race, but they weren't too big, and when they did get big, it distracted from the main thing. I applaud John Ridley's efforts. Uh, I did feel like his direction was a little toned down in this season. Some of the things I noticed in the first season, the interesting motion editing that was done in which a character would be talking and then sometimes it would just cut to like their reaction of something else like it would be like their sort of their feeling their emotion that they're having in that moment that kind of thing uh that that wasn't there this season that they really toned that down there was a few uh long takes here and there 
Uh, but that was toned down a bit. I'm still interested to see what John Ridley does for the third season, if he gets a third season. Uh, which I have a feeling he probably will, considering that he's working with Marvel still. He's still working on developing whatever project he has working with Marvel Television, so I don't think ABC will be quick to cancel his show. Uh, considering that's just how networks work, you know, if you if you have a producer that you really want to work with other projects for your network, you don't really want to cancel the show you already have. Better pacing, just a couple of uh, storylines that were out of place, but ultimately, I still stand by what I said, I did enjoy this show better than the first season, uh, just because of pacing alone. Pacing alone, and I kind of connected to the characters better. Uh, but that's just me personally because I'm young and most many of the characters in the show were young and high school was is still kind of fresh in my mind. I hope that uh, some of the problems I had with this season don't come up in the third. And that's my review for American Crime Season 2. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.